All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, you're taking action towards your health, towards bettering uh, your quality of life, and that's what this talk is all about. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Andrew, Coach Andrew of CrossFit and 8. This is my brother, Dr. Nick, Santa Barbara Family Chiropractic. Um, let's get moving. We're going to talk about movement mobility, prevention and recovery from injuries, aches and pains, any limitations. And we are going to start it off with a very powerful video to put it all in perspective. Why we're doing this talk tonight and why you want to take action on it. What will your last 10 years look like? Will you be quick enough for a game of tag with your grandchild? Strong enough to embrace every moment? Will you grow old with vitality? Or get old with disease? It's time to decide. PowerPoint. Have you guys seen that video before? Anybody? Nobody? One person? It's powerful, right? We, sh we show that, and the reason that we chose that video to show tonight is because when Andrew and I talk, we understand that it's our choices every single day, every single minute that I either push us towards health or towards disease. So when we looked at that picture of that gentleman, it was the same guy, same exact guy. But the choices that he made that day, that week, that month, or even that year did not get him to that position. One health, vitality, one disease, sickness. We all stand here in a fork in the road every day and we have the choice to go down the path towards health and the path towards sickness. And the reason that we do these workshops is to get people to, to get fired up, to get focused on the, the dull, the, main, the mundane, the choosing vegetables over packaged processed foods, the choosing the right movements over the wrong movements. Unfortunately, in our culture though, what Andrew and I have learned through the last 15 years of study is that most of us don't know how to move our body the way that we're supposed to for health to end up in that situation. So a lot of it comes down to luck and we want to get rid of the luck factor. Okay, now it's, it's hard to make the right choices sometimes for health. We all understand that. But as you guys saw from that other, the life of disease, that's no easier. That's harder in the long run. Okay, so this, this workshop, although it's about how to stand up and sit up and move and, and all these small things, it makes the hugest impact, the biggest impact in our life over the long haul. Okay, so it's, and this is one of my favorite quotes, it's the dull and determined effort that creates a life of brilliance. Okay, there's no brilliant achievement without a dull and determined effort. So being here, learning, investing in your own education is the best thing you can do for yourself to make sure you have the best possible chance at a life of vit vitality. So I really appreciate it, Andrew, and I really appreciate your guys' time, and we're going to make it worth it. What Nick said, um, so health is a choice, we're going to make better choices and live a better life. So how do we get into trouble? How do we hurt ourselves? How do we cause pain and suffering? Picking something up wrong, heavy or light, right? Animate or inanimate? Eating jack in the box. Eating jack in the box. <laughs> Right? On a car trip and all those things. Anything else? Any like big incidents? Of course, there's like a car accident, right? Or some sort of injury or traumatic event. Um, stress. stress, right? Cumulative stress, emotional stress that can all send us into injury and pain. Um, you got that, right? Next slide. So, there's Macro trauma, uh, that singular impactful event, an injury of sorts. So we can't affect that much, right? We, we have to live our lives. Bad things happen to good people. So we're not going to focus too much on that. We are going to focus more on 
the micro trauma, the repetitive stress injuries, like you said, sitting at a desk for eight hours, uh, picking something up improperly. Um, this is what we have control over. This is where we can bring mindfulness and awareness and uh, choose better movements and make a better, make a difference. So it's what we can control on. So where our problems come from? Journal of Manipulative Physiological Therapeutics. Two main promoters of degeneration break down in our lives are repetitive strain, sedentary lifestyle, sitting all day at the computer. We weren't designed for that. So what we're going to go over is how to stop this. How to, what are the things that we can do safely, right? So prevention. This is the prevention portion of our workshop right now. So we're going to go into how we create these life issues and we're going to practice all this stuff. So these are the, these are the things that we're going to cover here. Standing, sitting, lifting, sleeping, walking, running, and awkward things. And there's actually quite a lot of awkward things that we do. Uh, so, uh, but before we do that, a quick spinal biomechanics. Where's my spine? Anywhere? No dice? Okay. Can you get that poster too, Josh? Thanks. I know. My, my visual presentation. Okay. Spinal biomechanics. All or none. Okay, so this is how our spine likes to move. This is really important for you guys to understand. Your spine loves to move as a whole unit. So if we're going to do something explosive like this, he's got open extension. Every joint of his spine is moving. And then it'll collapse like that, like a whip. Okay, so it likes all the joints to move, or it likes none of the joints to move. And really the difference in when we should use which is has to do with load. Okay, so if we're any time there's a load involved, we do not want to be moving the whole spine. We want to have it stable like that. So Andrew's going to go into how to practice this, I guess. That's right. So taking it into the gym, how to train it properly. Um, we've got to have good midline stability. That's the concept of connecting that pelvis to the spine and having them move together as one unit. You see in this first picture, that's what she's doing. The pelvis is with the spine. There's a nice big hinge. There's no movement through the vertebrae. They're all used together as one joint. Um, and then here we have flexion of the spine, but it's global flexion, right? It's not just at one spot where you get lots of pain and an injury, but it's through the whole thing. We want to be careful to keep our abs tight and en stay engaged when we do this type of movement. And we do not want to load that up, right? We, we all sort of cringe if we see somebody trying to pick up something heavy like this. There's a reason why the health of your spine and joints. Just to give you a visual, so all or none, right? So all the joints moving as a unit, that's all. None is like this, so hinging at the hips, going down, picking something up, coming back up and staying like that. So your spine <coughs> hates singular joint movement. It really hates that. One or two joints doing a lot of work, that's gonna cause a lot of damage. And that's where most of our damage came from. That's how I got into chiropractic. I did that a whole bunch of times to my low spine, just a couple little movements like this over a 20 year span and I blew out a disc that should have lasted me 120 years. So I started doing things right and got it, learned all this stuff and now it's doing well, awesome. So we're going into how to practice these things. Okay, so posture, everybody stand up. Get up. This is interactive. Okay, you're on it, bro. So we see in the picture you can get taller, you can get slimmer, you can get healthier, more energetic just by focusing on that posture in the moment, okay? Um, we'll start with squeezing your butt, give it a good butt flex. And that's going to orient your spine, uh, your pelvis right under your spine and stack everything up nice and solid. You don't have to keep it flexed, but flexing it is going to help reset it after you're sitting all day or getting up. We want to think about lifting the heart up to the horizon, like 45 degree angle but we don't want to introduce movement at one joint. We want it to be global, so we have to keep our abs engaged. Go ahead and give yourself a check to the midsection. Make sure there's tension there. We're going to get our shoulders back and down, externally rotated through the shoulders, back tight. Okay, there's big muscles called your lats that are really dormant on a lot of us. We want to engage those, get them woken up, and then look down at those feet. Want them right underneath your hips, pointed straight ahead. If you're standing this wide, I guarantee your hips are not that big. Bring them right underneath, 
point them straight ahead and get active a slight knee bend sort of screw your hips into the ground you're going to be a lot more stable you're going to be uh, supporting your joints your organs your heart connective tissue this is standing the, the way that Andrew's describing how to stand up and screwing your feet in. So if you guys have your feet straight ahead and you squeeze your butt, you'll feel your feet rotate. Do you feel that? Okay. That creates an arch at the bottom of your feet. Okay. So a lot of people who have flat feet, it's often because they stand like this and they turn that off and it rolls in. So standing with better posture and squeezing and having good posture actually can help grow and recreate an arch. Okay. That will help strengthen feet, get rid of a lot of problems with the feet. I remember when I was first taught this, I was like, I'm supposed to stand like that all the time? That's crazy. Uh, but it's gotten so much easier and I just feel a lot stronger. It helps do things like keep your adjustments, give you strong stability. So, so um, we're talking about sitting because most of our culture has to do this all the time. So there are problems associated with both sitting and standing. Okay, there's no posture that's perfect. Okay, we got to understand that. We are, as, as this is uh, Dr. Kranz from uh, Berkeley Architecture, architecture. Uh, the best posture is the next posture. So what we teach next door, what they teach here is that chronic movement, as much movement as we put into our life all the time. So that means if you have a desk job, what do you got to do? Stand up. Stand up. You got to take breaks from the desk. How often? Does anybody remember? 10 to 15 minutes, right in that range. Every 10 to 15 minutes. Doesn't mean you have to take an hour break, it just means you need to go. Everybody stand up right now. Okay, sit back down. That's it. That's all you gotta do. You get a butt flex in there. If you, yeah. <laughs> Spend the extra second. Okay, but that's a, this is an adequate picture for what the chair does to us. Okay, and I'm gonna jump to this slide because currently the average American spends 30 years of their life sitting, okay? Of particular note, New York Times, six years ago, there's a link between premature mortality, dying younger, based on people who sit more of the day. Okay? You have a greater chance of dying. This is heavy, but it's important to hear. Okay? <clears throat> because sitting is the new smoking. I laughed when I heard that the first time. I was like, that's funny. And I was like, wait, I read the research and it was like, oh, people die from this all the time. This is actually cr creating shortened lifespan. So we really got to take those breaks every 10 to 15 minutes. Okay? When you do sit, this is how you want to do it. You can see this diagram here. You want your computer at eye level. So at our, our clinic, we have everybody take pictures of their workstations and I evaluate that. So we want this to be eye level. We want our, our shoulders directly next to our, our elbows, directly next to our body. We don't want to be doing this. That causes all kinds of problems through your neck and shoulders. We got this at 90, and you want this to be your knees below your hips. Okay? That creates a nice lordosis, a nice curve to the low spine. Okay? But again, we only want to be in this for how long? 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. So you can see, not like this guy or this guy. That's terrible down there. Don't do that. Okay. Uh, unstable surface, we've got balls. You can see I had this elaborate, expensive contraption to get my computer up there. Okay. And then, not sitting, sitting not continued. So this is really cool. In the last few years, there's been a lot more um, types of standing up desks. So this is great. You got people that are now standing the majority of the day. There's even treadmills you can hook up for your, so you can do it all. I think that, that only costs about $1,000 for that, probably another 1000 there. You can get uh, stand-up desks that range from like 60 bucks, you build them yourself, to three or four, $5,000, so it's whatever. They, they go up and down and they, I, they probably cook for you, I don't know. Um, down here you got, this guy's got an awesome squat down there. He's, he's on desk. some work desk, okay. And the last piece about sitting, uh, what about driving couches and other? Okay, so we're going to practice a little bit of sitting here. Everybody, let's, let's scoot to the edge of our chair. Andrew, can you grab a chair and demo this? Okay, so when we scoot to the edge of our chair, unless you have monster uh, shins like, like Andrew and I do, um, you're going you're gonna to be able to drop your knees below your pelvis. So you can do it by sticking your legs out, you can tuck them underneath you, whatever it is, but that angle creates this arch in your low spine. Can you guys feel that? That's what you want, okay? The worst thing that you can do is have your feet high and your knees above your hips. Just like what you do when you're driving. That rounds that low back. Okay, it pushes a lot of pressure into those discs. 
Okay, so we don't want to be like that at the workplace. The next thing that we can do if we have to find ourselves in that situation is take an ab mat. Could I get an ab mat, somebody? Because this, this is actually the best thing that I've found as a lumbar support. Thank you, China. Right over here. So you take this rogue side upside down, wedge it down in the, in the car, and that creates an awesome arch support. If you can't get the knees below, okay, that's a great um, option there. So you've got those two options. Knees below, taller chair, or something that's pushing, it, pushing that hips forward. Okay? You guys can feel what I'm talking about, that rounded forward? That's what you're looking for. Okay. All right. Any questions on sitting? Good? Okay, sleep. Really important here. I think we spend the other 30 years doing this. It's a lot of time. All right, best to worst, on your back, small to no pillow. That can be really uncomfortable. It took me about a year to get rid of the pillow. And now I use like a feather pillow that kind of sinks all the way in. Because I took Jen's, thanks. You, you like the big ones now. It's just like, when she, when she went through pregnancy, she got like, we had 75 more pillows in this. It's crazy. And we, only, we have, now we, we have 70. I don't know where we are. Anyways, um, so on your back is the best, okay? Just like good posture, but you know, on your back. On your side, that's okay. On a couch, super soft. On your side or on your back, on your stomach, on your stomach on a couch, not sleeping. That's best to worst right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna demo a couple. Andrew, actually I'm gonna have Andrew demo a couple. Okay, so next best would be that with a small pillow underneath his head. Okay, and if you use a monster pillow that pushes your head forward, because that's the only comfortable position for you right now, just start to use the step down from the monster pillow. And then the, the next step down, the next step down, the next step down. Because uh, what that does is it creates a lot of tension again through here. A lot of times why that's comfortable is because we sit all day and we look at computers like this, and we lose all the, the flexibility through here and it gets all tight here and we go to lay down and we're like that. We're like, it hurts to do that. So we gotta build up that flexibility again, okay? Um, okay, on your side. Okay, really important, on your side, you wanna have your shoulder in front of your body. Okay, don't sleep directly on your shoulder. That's not good for your shoulder, okay? So those lats that Andrew was talking about, that's what you wanna be, right there, okay? You can also have a pillow between your legs if you want. You can have a pillow right in front, both of those, body pillow, we have one of those now, okay. Um, and then, we're not even, we don't even, well, you can go face down. On that table you can, but not on any, yeah, see, this is why this is terrible, because it, it causes what we call subluxation joint damage all the way through this whole region. Andrew, can, if he was like awake during this position, he would probably only hold this position, like everybody turn their head to the right right now, okay. Like, we'll give this like 10 more seconds, but you're gonna be like, I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable with this. Imagine doing that for eight hours. That's why we can't sleep on our stomach, okay? Come on up. And the only way that's acceptable if you are a stomach sleeper to start working towards the side, do you know how to do this? Lay on your stomach there again. This is what we give as an all, because we wanna keep that spine nice and straight. Okay, pitch onto your left side. I gotta do this, this is too hard to tell you. I gotta show you, okay. So, <clears throat> You need two pillows to do this if you're gonna to try to work your way towards. Okay, so this is a narrow bed. You wanna prop one hip like that, okay? And then you wanna have a pillow right here. So it's kinda of like you're on your stomach, but your spine's still pretty straight, okay? So that's like a compromise. Try to make this uh, easier. These changes aren't easy, but they're easier, okay? Baby steps. That's it, and celebrate every victory. If you went from a monster pillow to a little bit less of a monster, that's a good, that's a great thing for your health, you know? You don't have to get there today. Remember that video of uh, the elderly gentleman? He didn't get there one or the other in a day. That's good, bro, so now we're going into lifting. Lifting, um, let's go ahead and stand up again. Come on up, so, there's going to be a lot of transfers from one good posture to the next. There's just some basics that we want to focus on. Um, good posture again, shoulders back and down, head over the torso, over the hips, the knees, and ankles. Uh, if you're picking up something heavy or you're not sure, you want to breathe down into your belly, right? Keep it out of the chest, keep it into the belly. That way you can tighten up against that air and sort of bubble wrap your spine and protect it. 
Um, I'm going to keep weight in your heels. If you're getting pulled into your toes, you're getting pulled out of your posterior chain into your back. So weight in your heels, keep the object close. And then as we pick up something, we're going to push the earth away. Keep your feet and your body together, right? Do you want to lift something heavy like this? Uh, right, no. You want to gather, keep it coordinated, move your feet with your body. Okay, next slide. Can I add real quick? Yes. This stuff, even though this is so simple, will save you so much time, so much pain, so much anguish. This is the reason that we do this, just that little, like how many people that I see because of this, they do that. They pick up something heavy, they aren't thinking, they grab something and move it. And it becomes, it's, a, it's using me as a custodian rather than a Sherpa to help you up the mountain. I have to clean up messes. And so we want to do that here. And this also keeps people from getting their goals in the gym because they'll do stuff at home like this and then they can't push it as hard in here because their spine's not as strong. So all these little things make a huge impact. You guys follow me? Okay. All right, the uh, foundational movement, the squat. Let's, uh, if you can, just get a little bit of space at least uh, to the sides. We're gonna have a shoulder width stance, okay? Feet about as parked under your shoulders. We can toe out a bit, but not too much. Yes, please, thank you. Um, turn to the side. So he's gonna, so there was a picture of that tunnel because we wanna enter the tunnel. We wanna prepare ourselves for the movement before we do it, right? We get into trouble when we think, I'm not doing anything yet. Yank. Organize yourself, get prepared before you do it. Everybody get a half a foot from their chair, okay? Even if you can squat awesomely, we wanna do this, okay? So a half a foot, so you can just reach your butt back to that chair and you're just gonna touch it and then come back up or get close to it if you can't, okay? We do not want to see this, none of this, none on the toes, even if we keep our spine straight, because like Andrew said, that'll destroy our knees, okay? So we want to make sure that our knees are behind our toes and our spine is straight. It's okay to pitch forward, just keep your spine straight. Side note, this was uh, a huge determining factor in uh, quality of life, longevity. If you fall and you can't get back up, if you, um, I think cultures in Asia, they're able to keep their functionality a lot longer because they don't have high toilets, because they're forced to practice their squat over and over again. So that's one option, right? Built-in practice. Next slide. And you guys can see, we learn this right away. We lose it because we sit in chairs and things get tight. But this is what we, you know, this is a two-year-old. All two-year-olds can do this. Proper posture when lifting. <laughs> they call it the deadlift after this guy who uh, did it the wrong way and killed himself. Right? That's terrifying. Don't ever do that. Please don't do that. Um, this is when we want to keep that pelvis connected to the spine and drive everything together. So let's go ahead and stand up one more time. I'm going to get you sweating here. Um, can, I see something? Yeah. Can, can you guys see the flexion at a couple vertebra there? Can you guys see that when you look at the... The, the dead guy on the left, or the right, left. Can you see how he's, his spine is just doing this, right there, at the couple of joints right through here where this is staying straight and this is all wrenching there? That's not good. Don't do that. If you're picking something up, so you can use squat mechanics to do that, what we were just practicing, or we can get those hips back a little bit more, a little more hip dominant, and then once we get it back, we're dropping everything down, picking up said object, getting tight, and then pushing the earth away. Let's go Go ahead and imagine something heavy-ish that you have to pick up, laundry basket, big bag of groceries, a small child, come on down, hips back, and then drop everything together. Bring that object close to your body, tighten up, and then just push the earth away. Stand up, squeeze it upright. Let's do three more, down and hold it at the bottom. Hold it here, pull your shoulders back, tighten your core, get long and strong, and then drive the earth away. Good. One more down. Grab it, get it tight, and stand it up. Excellent. Looking good. It's more work to do that than to fishing pole and reach down and pick something up, but it's not more work than dealing with lots and lots of pain. Right, so avoid the lots and lots of pain by spending the extra energy and calories 
of using good form. Oh, this goes for putting the weights on and off too for you CrossFitters, for you work, people that work out in here. No this stuff to get the weights on and off. We got to use good form to do that as well. Okay, so it'll make a difference in your workouts. Good form with the weights. Okay, and here's one more option if you're uh, building strength or lifting something awkward up. Um, Nick's going to demonstrate this one. And we're going to see again some connecting pieces, some transfer. So what are some things that we want to be looking for? Shout it out there. Straight spine. Straight spine, excellent. Got to be balanced, engaged. Abs engaged. Keep the knee over the ankle, keep the knee back behind the toe, show them what they should not do. Crank it way out there. Where do we want the weight, in the front of the foot or the back of the foot? Back of the foot, he's going to have more strength there. Pick up the object, drive it up. Excellent. So when you're starting to pick things up, if you don't have the flexibility to do the deadlift or the squat, then you can use the, the, the lunge, keep your spine nice and straight. Bring things close. Come on up. Okay, how to walk. How could we hurt ourselves walking? It's just walking. Look at that. You take, uh, by the age 50, we take 112 million steps. Unless you have a Fitbit. If you have a Fitbit, it's probably like double that. <laughs> My wife just got a Fitbit and she's just, it, look at this. Men on average take 7,000 and 5,000. Jen hit 26,000 in a day. It was a, it was a long day. It was a half marathon, that's true. But still. <laughs> but you hit like 20,000 a different day. So, anyways, we're going to do something 100, and mil 100 million times plus its potential for damage. So we can take note from these guys right here. Animals, okay? We are human animals. How do animals walk in the wild? Do they make a bunch of sound and they stir up stuff and they don't care if there's predators around? Or are they super quiet? They're like ninjas. All wild animals are like ninjas. They're totally walking around super quiet. Okay? If you watch Macmillan and Buckley walk, you might hear the tapping of their nails, but that's it. You don't hear anything else because they're super quiet. They know that the, innately they understand that the energy goes into the muscles and not into your joints if you walk quietly. Okay? Same thing applies for running. Okay? So we teach. Uh what we consider to be proper running mechanics here, pose method or chi method, a lot of different names for it. But the idea is uh, we want to be landing on the ball of the foot, like this uh, gentleman on the right here. Um, we see a nice gradual uh, impact slope or force. Um, and then we throw a big shoe on, which is going to decrease our shock awareness. We're not going to really understand what kind of shock we're doing to our bodies and we bang slam the heel down and look at that really sharp uh, shock impact okay ankles knees hips low backs necks that's all going to happen if we're just sort of clomping around on our heels um, we want to be conservative if we're changing the way that you learn how to run you don't just want to throw off your shoes and sprint down the street um, there's a lot of rehab to do for our feet and our bodies and our mechanics so just something to consider, but it's going to help us understand how to walk, how to run, nice and quiet. A great like, visual that I like to talk about when I talk about this is if you're on the pavement out there and you had to run across it with no shoes, how are you going to land? Not on your heels, right? Because that would just devastate us. On concrete, boom, take one rock, you're over, it's done. <laughs> so you'd want to do this, right? So this is the ball. So we're going to practice walking, not running. So everybody stand up. Okay, just walk around crazy wise, doesn't even matter, just walking in circles, going to different places, try not to knock into people. Um, but we don't want to hear anything. Be super quiet. Some of you may already walk like this. Some of you have never walked like this ever. Okay, you can find your seats.
got to practice. We got to get that kinesthetic sense going. Okay. So, like Andrew said, there's a lot of rehab to be done on our feet. Uh, there's tons of literature out there about lots of feet issues being caused by weakened feet from shoes. So, start walking around your house with no shoes. Work to the beach. If you get feisty, go on the on the pavement. But be quiet. Anything else? We're good. Let's get it there. Okay. Awkward lifts. Okay, so lots of awkward things in life. Okay, we got construction, gardening, vacuuming, sweeping, sneezing, all kinds of stuff that we do that people hurt themselves doing these things. Okay, so the keys on any of this awkward stuff, let's say a sneeze is coming on. It's coming. What do we not want to do? We don't want to turn our head like this. Don't do that. We don't want to get into a weird position right before. Okay, <laughs> I've had many people hurt their, themselves from sneezing, putting on a pair of pants. It's over. So we want to all these awkward moves. Whether it's getting under, like getting under into a weird position like this, where we have to get something underneath the car, underneath the sink, whatever it is. Number one is tighten your abs. Okay, this is like a weight belt for your spine. Okay, tighten it. That's what you got to do. Depending on the severity of the position, the severity or the amount of tension. If I'm gonna, if Andrew's gonna deadlift 300 pounds, he's gonna have rock solid abs. If he's gonna pick up a pencil. He's going to have a little bit of tension there. You know, gauge that. Okay. Straight back always. Flex at the hip, uh, hip and knees. Straight back when possible. And then point the feet in the direction of the work being done. <clears throat> so one thing I want to comment is dishes. Okay, dishes happen to be at like the worst position possible. You guys have ever had pain in your back from the dishes? So it's like, it's like right in that zone where you're like, how do I get down, down there to do it? Or you're rounding like this, and this is usually what happens is we don't even think about it, and we're just washing dishes like this, and then we're like, oh, what's going on? What's happening? So what we want to do is do the hard thing. Squat down a little bit, widen the stance, you can do that. Just want to keep your spine as straight as possible. Hinge at the hips, okay? You can even have a, something to stand on like that, that can help. That's why bars have that. They know that you'll stay there and drink longer if your back doesn't hurt. So. They're smart. Business, right? They figure, they figure stuff out. Anything you want to say about that? No, that okay. covers it. Okay, last thing I want to say on awkward movements is picking up babies. <laughs> I've got a seven month old, so I get, I've gotten a lot of practice at this. This is how you want to pick up babies. On the right? <laughs> okay. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but seriously, the, uh, the crib, right? The crib is like the worst invention ever for your spine. Because it's like, you can't keep your spine straight because there's this block right here. And what you have to get to is down there. And they're squirming and, all, and they keep getting heavier. So you can't, you can't bend down like this because then you can't reach. So what do you got to do? You lower the rail a little bit. Sometimes they do that. That's great. <laughs> he's not jumping yet. He's, have you seen him? He's huge. He's I, I love you, buddy. Um, no, so tighten abs. That's it. That's all you can do. Right? And also, work out. Be ready. Train have, that's right. Have, be, train for life. Make sure you're strong. But that's it. You've got to make sure that this is super tight as you reach over there and get them and tighten it up even further. So, <coughs> that's hard because, especially for my wife, at close to the body, that's another one. So you want to reach over, bring them as close. Don't try to pick them out up like this. Bring it close and then pick it up. Pick them up. And uh, at 1 a.m., that's tough, <laughs> right? You're tired, so give yourself some slack. But that's what you've got to do when you try to. Okay. Anything else? Enemies of safe and healthy posture. Texting and unilateral habits, okay? This is a thing in the literature now, text neck. I see spines getting uh, degeneration at a much faster rate now than I did seven years ago. I've only been practicing for like seven or eight years. And now I see kids with necks breaking down because they've been texting since they were six. So, try not to let kids text. Use your <laughs> get it up here. Just build your awareness, you know. Just get that. If you guys ever saw Casey, he was the master at texting like this. It's impressive, but it's going to make a difference if you're here for an hour a day. Especially the iPad wrist too, right? And then the neck. It's bad news. But this is weird, Andrew. 
You got to be weird if you want to live a long, healthy, happy life. And embrace the weird. Embrace the weird. Okay. Washington Post a month ago, two months ago. Look at this. Normal, healthy, good posture texting with your eyes, not your spine. Zero degrees. The head weighs about 12 pounds. Okay. Everybody's a little bit different, but roughly. When you increase that lever arm, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45, 60. Has, you, has anybody ever texted like this? Anybody? Where you can't see their, their head at all from behind? They're just like... You're like, what, what's happening in that guy, right? Um, look at that. That 12 pound head, because of physics in the lever arm there, becomes a 60 pound head. 60 pounds on your neck. How long do you think your neck likes to hold 60 pounds? Not long. That's right, so don't do that. Unilateral patterns, okay. This gets a lot of us. Let's look, there's one, there's another one. We got, there's another one, there's another one. We got them, so they happen all the time. The key is that we want to mix it up. So, everybody who's doing it, switch to the other side right now. It'll feel weird if you're used to that side. So first we've got to be aware, because this stuff sneaks into us, into our daily life, we don't even know. And over time it creates damage. So number one, we've got to be aware of it. So just spend the next week auditing your movement patterns. Okay? Switch it up and then to work towards stopping. So if you notice, oh, I've been doing this for a while, I better do it on the other side for equal amounts of time. Any questions? There's literally tons of them. What about crossing your leg I mean, this way versus this way for like a hip stretch? Is there one that's better or worse? For a hip stretch? Well, I mean, is it, is it less damaging to sit with your leg like this than it is like this? Or it I don't think it matters. It matters more of how long you're doing it. Okay. Yeah. I would mix them both up. Can you repeat the question? Oh, it was like crossing this way or this way, which is more damaging? It's just unilateral is unilateral for the most part. I mean, I don't know. If, there, if there's research that I find, I'll let you know. Okay. Oh, okay. You can't out exercise a bad diet, right, Andrew? That's right. You can't out ad adjust a bad habit. So if you guys continue to do things like stand like this or text like this, we can't gain leverage in the adjusting. So adjusting to rehab your spine takes more time if we don't change our habits. Okay, so now we're moving on to what do bad habits cause? What do bad habits cause if uncor uncorrected? Joint damage, muscle connective tissue damage, and then lastly, we'll get pain and symptoms. So let's talk about joint damage. So chiropractors call this subluxation. If I was a dentist, I'd talk to you about cavities. I'm not, I'm a chiropractor. Yes. Um, talk about subluxations. Those are cavities in your spine. Okay, so where's the spine here? So. <clears throat> Spines are really important. They do two things. They hold us upright. That's your posture. The second thing they do is they protect your spinal cord, which you can't see, but it goes right through there. The spinal cord is the master you know, attached to the master communicator. So you guys get that your brain runs your body. It does that. All the organs, tissues, they're dependent upon the energy from your brain through your spinal cord, out through these nerves to all the tissues and organs of your body. Does that make sense? Okay. So through stressors in life, some sudden, like a motor vehicle accident, or some over time, like poor postures, text neck, for long, long periods of time, sitting at the computer. What happens is these joints get damaged, okay? They shift out of position. That's, that's what a subluxation is. It's joint damage, okay? The joints stop moving and working like they should. More importantly, they start to shut off the energy at that level of the spinal cord, which feeds out to the tissues and organs. You guys can see this picture here. Different parts of your spine feed to different tissues and organs. Okay? So when we start to shut off energy coming out of the low back, that can not only affect your low back, but also your legs and your feet. It can affect your lower organs of digestion, bowel, bladder, reproductive system. Middle back can feed into the heart, the lungs, the stomach, neck, arms, hands, organs of the head, headaches, sinuses, eyes, ears, nose, allergies, immune system function. So believe it or not, your spine has a huge impact in your overall health. So when we get a subluxation in our neck, it can cause all kinds of things, not just neck pain. So the stuff that we're talking about here with application to proper biomechanics helps your overall health, how your liver and how your heart and how your stomach, all that stuff functions, okay? So chiropractors find those and correct them. You can see the biomechanical changes when we have subluxation. This guy's gonna wear out unevenly. He might need to, have, need to have a knee replaced in 30 years. 
And then he thinks his knee is a bad knee. But this knee's been walking around the same as this knee. Why is that happening? Well, we look to the cause of these things. Okay, so joint damage is one of the major things that postures create. All right, so chicken or the egg, muscle connective tissue damage. Um, these are going to be things like trigger points, right? Really sensitive areas in our muscles, uh, knots. You're going to lead to decreased range of motion, lack of flexibility. And then those things are going to eventually lead to injury or some sort of limitation, not being able to do what you want to do. Or when you do it, you get hurt. All right. So Andrew and I are not, we understand that Medications have their place, so do surgeries, all right? But I'm gonna ask this question. Which of these three can medications get rid of? Like ibuprofen. Pain, that's right. Now, what happens if we take medication and get rid of number three to number one and number two? Anything? It's gonna continue to be worse. That's right, so it's affecting the symptoms and often symptoms come towards the end of a problem. You can have joint damage and muscle connective tissue damage for a long time before your body starts to express pain and symptoms. A lot of times 50% of function is lost before we feel those pain. So this is some really important stuff to understand because NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, Tylenol, Advil, those types of things, they inhibit the healing process of soft tissue. My knee hurts, I'm going to take some Advil, that it slows that or stops the healing process. So the, the tissue damage continues to happen, okay? NSAIDs also allow us to resume activity prematurely. I take that, my knee feels better. I can go back to the gym and do some stuff. But is the tissue damage gone? No. no. So what do we end up doing? We hurt ourselves more even though we don't notice it. It takes even longer, if at all, to heal. You guys follow me so far? Okay. Joint replacements occur earlier and quickly and more frequently in people who take chronic NSAID use. Okay. So, <clears throat> pain and symptoms are important. We honor them, but we never try to mask them. We want to try to get to the root cause. Okay. It takes more time. Okay. So how to fix the cause of our problems? Correct our joint damage, our subluxations, replace bad habits, and balancing exercises, cool thing. We've already talked about this right there. So we got one of them done. It's also the same way as how you maintain your health over a lifetime. When we looked at the elderly gentleman, it's not just one choice that got him to wear good or bad, right? So we gotta keep doing these things. This is how you would correct subluxations through adjustments. Adjustments rehabilitate the joints, help the spine to work better, be more functional, improves Inflammation or reduces inflammation and stress, improves motion, communication within the nervous system. All right, and talking about correcting muscle connective tissue damage, we got to regain full range of motion. That's when the tissue is going to be healthy is when it has its full range of motion. So we could think of like teeth, right? You want to floss, you want to break up the, the plaque or the adhesions in your muscle. Say this muscle gets a big knot in it, it can no longer slide and glide like it's designed to. It's just sort of a big rock. We've got to break that up, and then we've got to lengthen it with stretching and or both moving, right? Functional movement. If you, we often uh, will see a lot of limited range of motions, and um, that's just not the healthiest joint, not the healthiest muscles. So we've got to regain that through those three things. Okay, so which exercises should you, each and every one of you do? It's totally different. Everybody's is totally different on this category, right? Because you guys have all suffered different injuries. You have different jobs, you have different stressors, different challenges, different diets, all that stuff. So we need to assess that. Okay, so there's, this is kind of cool though. We can do a couple of really routine assessments and see what you should be working on. Okay, so the majority of the work the people do on their own health obviously is up to you guys. It's the responsibility on you, but not knowing that hurts you. So we're going to go over some things that we can do on our own self. Okay, so <clears throat> this is really cool too because when we started learning this stuff, you can, you can see where someone's going to hurt if they don't hurt already. You'd be like, if you don't change this, eventually your knee's going to hurt. If you don't change this, eventually your shoulder's going to hurt. Or your shoulder's hurting, this is why. Okay, so. 
I'm assessing you on the first two? Yes. Okay, so shoulders, T-spine. So we're gonna do an assessment here. Andrew's gonna lay on the ground. And after we finish this, we're gonna go through these really quickly. We are going to end pretty quickly here. <clears throat> and what we're gonna have you guys do, if you, if you wanna stick around, we're gonna have different um, areas with different coaches that can go over these assessments with you guys, okay? So first what he's gonna do is just lay on the, on the ground with good posture, okay? So he's gonna squeeze his butt, his abs, everything is tight, and he's gonna bring his arms, he's gonna lock them out next to his side or straight up like that, and he's gonna bring them all the way until they touch the ground. That's full range, okay? So he needs to have full range of motion through his shoulders. Even if the shoulders don't hurt and they don't have full range, they're not healthy. Full range of motion is key for health. Okay, so let's say he stops right there and he can't get any further. Well, based on what I'm seeing there, that would mean that we need to work on his shoulder in terms of his lats. So rolling out the, well, we'll talk about that when we stand up. Lats, triceps, uh, rotator cuff. What's gonna happen if he doesn't do that and he works out or he's trying to put a bag on, on, up on the shelf at, in the plane is he's gonna hyperextend through his mid back. He's gonna cause a flexion or an extension injury to his mid back over time. So CrossFitters, if you guys are constantly injuring your mid back or feeling pain there, it's usually because you're doing, you don't have the range here, so you do this. <coughs> You guys see that? Okay. Okay. Hamstrings. So he's going to get in good posture. Why don't you d demo this here? He's going to touch his hips and his ribs. Okay? Doesn't matter which rib. So that position, his thumb and his fingers should not change. If he rounds his spine, they will get closer together. If he extends his spine, they will get further apart. Okay, so we want to lock it in. Good posture there. Now he's going to hinge only at the hips, so his spine doesn't change. He's going to hinge there, and we're going to see how far he should go. Okay, so we want to get to about 90 degrees. So he needs to stretch a little more, bro. Okay, uh, but that's actually, I mean, it's pretty good. What were you when you started this? It was bad. I was like this. So, you know, and it's not uncommon in our culture that sits all the time to have like 15 degrees of motion and be stuck. But the problem is when, the, lock that out again, do that. Stop at 10, okay. So if his hamstrings will only allow him to go to there and he has to pick something up off the floor, what's he gonna use? His back, that's right, okay. That's okay if you're gonna do it once or twice, but if you do it thousands of times over, you know, years and years and years, he's gonna blow his back out, okay. Okay, um, hip flexors and glutes. Specific uh, assessment, um, we're all sitting, right? We're all shortening our hip flexors at this moment, I think. Um, so if we have shortened hip flexor and we go to stand up, boom, we're either gonna get into overextension, so we can see just on some people's posture how they, their, their pelvis is oriented, whether or not their hip flexors are gonna be tight. Um, as far as glutes, like if he tries to do a squat and he just cannot get back into his hips, can you do a quick squat? And his knees are just coming all sorts of forward. He's not able to push his knees out either. I'm, we're thinking he's got tight glutes. So, um, yeah. Real quick, we'll just show you. Um, should we wait to go into that, the circles? Yeah, should we show stretches right now or? Wait for the breakout groups. Yeah, let me do them real quick. Okay. So let's show our favorite hip flexor stretch. It's called the couch stretch because you can just use a couch, right? These have modifications too. Yeah. This can be a little intense. If his if he was really tight, I've ha just have him start on his hands, open that hip up, take time, and then get upright. And this is a really big stretch on that thigh and that hip flexor. If you had a high couch, right, you could just whoop, wedge it in the back of that couch with your shin on the back. And you can watch TV or text while you stretch. Okay? Um, stretching out the glutes is a classic figure four stretch. You can do it on his back. You can also do it standing or sitting in a chair at your desk. Um, he's going to cross his ankle over his knee, get into a figure four through his legs, and then pull those legs in. Same time, he sort of drives out into that hip and stretches that butt out, okay? If you get a lot of low back pain, 
hamstrings, glutes, hip flexors, those are all big targets to uh, get you some relief. And then ankles, feet together. He's gonna try to do a squat nice and as deep as he can go. Is that all you got? That's all I got. Okay, so we'd like his butt to be on his heels eventually. So that ankle will, uh, if you don't have that, you're gonna, like you said, compensate elsewhere and make your life easier to have flexible ankles and wrists. You could just do it yourself here real quick. Can you get to 90? If not, again, you're gonna be compensating and it's a sign of tight wrists. Should we want to show the shoulder real quick or? We got a foam roller. Show them what they can do. Okay, how to roll out the shoulder. This is really painful a lot of times in the beginning, especially if you need to do it. You're gonna open up that arm into extension like Andrew's doing there if you can't see. And then he's gonna roll up and down the lat. It's right on the side and he's also gonna go across it like that. You'll find some ropes, some knots, clunk, 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 clunk. That's what you wanna find. You wanna break that apart. I say break because it's really sucky and painful at first. But eventually it gets to be nice. Uh, you got to do all of these uh, for over a minute. Two minutes is ideal. Under a minute, worthless. Don't do it. No. But you really need to do it over a minute. Something's better than nothing. That's true. I shouldn't say that. But, <laughs> but if you're going to go all of the trouble to lay down on the floor, you might as well be there for a minute. OK. Um, hamstrings real quick. Hamstrings. So we got two options for the hamstrings. This is the mashing. Keeping his spine straight, abs are tight. He's just rolling out that hamstring, breaking up adhesions. Okay, and that's again one to two minutes. And then the hamstring stretch is exactly like the assessment. You just hinge over there until you feel a real tight pull in those hammies. You don't want to feel this in your spine. You can feel it in your calves, that's okay. Nothing back there though, okay? And you hold that, again, over a minute. After about 30 seconds, it'll open up a little bit and you should be able to just drop a little bit more, just like that. But not drop with your spine, drop with the hamstrings. Yes, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, all of these things, if you've never done these movements, they take practice, they take time, and they also take coaching. So it's always a good idea to have a coach. All right, so just real quick, talk about why CrossFit. We're here now, might as well. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity to master the fundamentals of, of human movement. We all do it all the time. We might as well practice it, get better at it, get stronger. We see even uh, knows no discrimination. We have the President of the United States moving a couch, right? And we all moved a couch. It's going to happen. We're going to have to move a couch at some point. Might as well know how the best way to do it and to be strong in it. Uh, same goes for overhead, push, pull, lift, run, jump. There's constant variety in here, so you're never getting that hammer of overuse, right? You're not just running all day, every day. You're not just doing yoga. You're not just lifting weights. You're doing all of it together so you can balance out your, your body, your physiology. Community's fantastic. We make friends. There's positive influences. There's, uh, you know, support. You get healthier when you hang out with healthier people, people like-minded. And then it's fun, right? It's super fun. Woo! and it makes life easier. So you work hard in here, you practice your stretches, you practice your movements, and life gets easier. One of the best things about CrossFit is that. And it's also when you go to move that couch, you know what your body can do. So when you work out, when you use this stuff on a regular basis, you know that you're gonna pick up something and it's you're like, oh, I pick up heavy stuff all the time. This is, I, I can't do this, or I can do this. I don't have to, oh, I, I can't do this. If you guys get what I'm saying there. Um, the second thing is, when you learn this stuff also, you can see like, the president has, deep, like, his hamstrings are long enough for this position for him. So you can see that because his spine is still straight, okay? This, this guy I'm worried about, he's not even ha bent to the couch already and I can start to see some rounding up there. So his hamstrings are probably really tight. I don't know who that is, but <laughs> if back pain is in his future or now, okay? So, <clears throat> and that's, oh, last thing I wanna say, Practice, like Andrew said, CrossFit allows for practice. So it doesn't matter if it's here or somewhere else, but the reps are what allows that normal, healthy mo motion. 
You can smash and stretch all day long, but until you use that functionally in a squat, it's not gonna come around as well. So you gotta smash, you gotta roll, and then you gotta do functional fitness, squatting, pushing, all kinds of different things. Okay, to improve where you're at. Does any, did anybody not find out a habit they could work on tonight? Someone got some, everybody's got something to work on? Okay, so we gotta, just pick one, don't get overwhelmed. Okay, we just talked, you're like, I gotta work on everything. Just pick one, okay? And just work on that one. Master that one, move on to the next one. Because we're all gonna go, you know, tomorrow's tomorrow, we're gonna go through it, might as well start working on one thing. Correct subluxations. Make sure, most people, if you've never been to a chiropractor, you don't, aren't regularly, you don't even know if you have a subluxation, so see a chiropractor. Uh, add balancing exercises. Stretch, find out what, what needs to be done for you. A lot of times, if, you, if you're new to this, all of it needs to be done. So all of these stretches and rolling and mashing are gonna help. Move more. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, one last thing, we uh, take ownership, take responsibility. Um, often you hear people say, oh, I gotta lift my kids all the time, or I have a bad back, or the, the, the place blame on something outside of themselves. There's no power in that. There's no empowering sense of, I can do something better. There's, there's nothing to hold on to. There's nothing to practice. So if you say, oh, my back hurts. I wonder, I probably could stretch more. I could probably improve the way I sat on that airplane or, or what I did after I got up. Um, start to take responsibility and, and see if there's things that you can't figure out every day. There's, get a little bit better at something.